Hello dear students, today we are going to do some of the practice questions for BITSAT and previous uh, pre BITSAT entrance examination. So the first question here today is, which of the following compounds acts both as an oxidizing and reducing agent? This question is from the chapter of the main group elements and the answer is SO2. This has been repeated in IAT JE as well. So you can expect this anytime once again. Uh, so the answer for this particular question is SO2. And as I have already said, it is very difficult to cover all the topics in S and P block. So always try to cover as many previous questions as possible, not just from BITSAT, but uh, IAT, JE, NEET, all the in all available question papers. Try to collect the questions from S block and P block and try to solve them. Then you can cover maximum questions and then have the maximum probability of giving the correct answer from the main group elements question in case of examination. Now the second question here is secondary nitroalkanes on treatment with nitrous acid forms. So the answer is pseudo nitroles. This is a test to distinguish between the primary and secondary nitroalkanes. So what would primary nitroalkane give? Primary nitroalkanes plus nitrous acid means HNO2. HNO2 water would be removed and it would form nitrolic acid nitrolic acid what is the structure of nitrolic acid you know now the secondary nitroalkane plus HNO2 would give minus H2O and would give pseudo nitroles pseudo nitroles the structure of pseudo nitrole will be like this C N O CH3 NO2 if the secondary nitroalkene has the structure CH3 CH CH3 NO2 if this is the secondary secondary nitroalkene then the pseudo pseudo nitrole would be this one so this is a test to distinguish between the primary nitroalkene and the secondary nitroalkenes nitrolic acid is formed by the primary nitroalkene and pseudo nitroles by the secondary nitroalkanes. The third question is due to Frenkel defect the density of the ionic solids it does not change because there is uh, th that effect does, does not cause any change in the total number of uh, that is in, in total there won't be any change in the number of particles in the particular solid but in case of short key defect short key defect there would be a decrease in density a decrease in density so you have to remember in case of Frankel defect there is no change in density and in short key defect there would be a decrease in density the next question is one of the favorite question of all of the all of the uh, examiners so the question is which one of the following vitamins contain a metal atom the answer is vitamin B12 and the metal atom that it contain is cobalt. So this is an important question and apart from this what you have to remember is magnesium is there in chlorophyll. Chlorophyll contains the magnesium metal. So this is very important because only certain metals are there in uh, vitamins and uh, chlorophyll for the BSc level exams and also for PG entrances always these kinds of questions come. For BITSAT only these two questions are the main important ones that can come from the biomolecules part. So please memorize this and go to the examination hall. So the next question is the Dumas method involves the determination of nitrogen content in the organic compound in the form of this N2. It will measure as free nitrogen. Then next question is which of the following does not represent a disaccharide. So what is a disaccharide? A disaccharide means two monosaccharides are combined by a glycosidic linkage. So in, the, in that case maltose is formed by glucose. Two glucose. Two glucose by alpha 1 4 linkage. Glycosidic linkage. So maltose is definitely a disaccharide. Then sucrose. Sucrose is formed by a glycosidic linkage of glucose plus fructose. Glucose and fructose. And lactose is formed by galactose and glucose. 
so all these three are formed by two monosaccharides combination so definitely our answer should be dextrose now the seventh question is when acetaldehyde is treated with phthalene solution it gives a precipitate of the answer is option d c two two o now let's see the equation because this is always important to you whether you are going to any other course also in chemistry practicals you are always this is always important so let's see the equation this is the aldehyde when it react with phthalene solution is the copper solution then NaOH also will be there it is going to form the ion plus Cu2 O plus 3 H2O so this is the equation and therefore as we can see as it is clearly visible from the equation Cu2 also will be precipitated with all the other other than aldehyde the, it will not give the precipitate and therefore we will not give the phalanx test as well now the next question is phenol and benzoic acid can be distinguished by there are multiple tests by which phenol and benzoic acid can be distinguished one of which being the reactions between reaction with aqueous nhco3 so what will happen when phenol and benzoic acid are reacted with aqueous nhco3 benzoic acid will be giving effervescence 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 by evolution of co2 by evolution of co2 is given please remember this because the question can be asked in this way also why does benzoic acid give effervescence when reacting with aqueous nhco3 in that case you have to remember it is because of the evolution of co2 but in case of phenol it does not give effervescence and therefore this benzoic acid and phenol can be distinguished the next question is green vitriol is for the option d is the correct answer fpso4.7 h2o is known as the green vitriol then the final question is p4o10 the number of oxygen atom attached to each of the phosphorus atom is it is option c4 i have already asked you to learn uh, the phosphorus and phosphorus oxides all the structures you have to learn because these kinds of question that is how many O groups are there how many PP bonds are there and how many PO bonds are there this is asked every time for every exam even in the lower to higher higher level of exams every exam this question is being asked so please do study all the uh, all the structures of phosphorus or phosphorus oxides and also the acids also phosphorus acid phosphoric acid all the acids also you have to study the structure uh, and also the number of bonds if you know the structure you can definitely write the answer for the number of bonds so please do learn that as well so that's all about today uh, continue watching our channel even after your examination we will be uploading more questions for practice and also keep studying because chemistry is a very good subject always study this we will be helping you to make uh, we will help you to make the subject simpler for you thank you so much for watching all the best for your exam thank you